create beautiful lighting and compositions with this new control net method. Hello my friends, how are you doing? So this week I did my first stage event on my Discord server, which means I listen to my community. So you can raise your hand, you get invited on the stage, you can show off the amazing things you're doing and the community delivered. You are working on such amazing things. I have such a beautiful community. So this is a direct result on that because this was suggested it from you to me and now I show you how that works. So let's get started here. First, let's have a look at the Civit AI page where you can download this. So this is trained by a user and what this does is basically that you can draw black and white and also gray value maps and they can be used as an input for the image with different weights for the control net so that you can control the lighting in the composition. But what you can also do here is to give it a more wake input and then create images from that that use the situation on where the light and the shadows should be and you can define what the light areas are through the prompt. So for example in this case you have a lighter background and you have these light dots in the background and then the character is rendered over that. Now this gives you at the same time more control over the situation but also more freedom with how the AI can render the character into the image. So if you already have Automatic 11.11 installed and ControlNet, this is very easy to set up because the only thing you need to do here is to download the model for the ControlNet method. Of course, as always, you download this into the automatic 11.11 folder, in there into the models folder and in there into the control net folder. After that, you want to start up your automatic 11.11 as usual. And then here in the list of models, you find the new lighting based picture model. So you want to load that, but leave the preprocessor on none because there is no preprocessor for it. Instead, what you want to do to create your images is to use any kind of graphic software. You can, for example, use Krita, which is completely for free. You can use online tools, any thing you want and with that you're going to create a map where you paint the light in there with black and white values of course the white values are the brighter values, the black values are the darker values, and you can use all of the gray values in between to create softer areas of that light. Another thing you can also do is that you use images that you either have created yourself or you find on the internet. So what you want to do here is you want to turn them black and white. So desaturate the image, you want to blur the image a little bit, that gives the AI more freedom on how to create the details in the image. And then you also want to intensify the contrast on that so that you actually have white and black values and then also the gray values in between. You can do all kinds of adjustments, you can paint over that with brushes to give even more light situations. Now let's go back into automatic 11.11 and have a look at the setting. For your prompt, the negative prompt, all of the settings you use for the rendering, you set everything up as usual. Now down here when you look at control net, what you want to do is of course you load the image you created in here, you turn the preprocessor to none, you load the model lighting based picture as I showed you before. Very important here of course is to enable the control net method so that is actually used. And then here for the next step you want to experiment with the control net weight and the ending control step. The ending control step defines how long the control net method is going to be used in percentage of the steps. So for example if you set this to 0 0.5 and you have 30 steps it means that the first 15 steps are using the control net and then afterwards the next 15 steps are not using the control net and the AI is rendering over the situation you have already created with control net. Another thing of course you can do is to experiment with the weight. I found that you often get very good results with a value between 0 0.4 
and 0.6. Now to be clear here, this is still an experimental method, but it can create wonderful results. But because it is more experimental, you need to do more experimentation with the settings and also you might need to render more images so you get a good result that you can actually use. So let's have a look at some examples here on how this can be used. Now first I created an image with mid journey so I am safe that I can use that it has some nice composition of an explorer standing inside of a cave and I'm going to use this as a base for my map creation. Here is the result from that. You can see on the top right is the map that I've created. So I desaturated the image so it's black and white. I blurred it. I made the contrast higher and then I recropped it into another composition because I wanted to have a character that is looking from the side into the scene as an explorer opening up the space visually. And as you can see here, we also completely changed the subject of the image. This is more of a fantasy scene here. We have a lake in the background. It is leading into a second cave. So all of that is very amazing. One thing I want to point out here is that I often got not so great results in the detail in the sophistication of the first result that I'm rendering with the AI in the lower resolution while using this control net method. Now this is not a problem at all because what I'm doing here is I'm sending it to image to image and then I'm upscaling it two times but I'm using a rather high denoise value in this case 0.5 and as you can see here, it added in all of the details, keeping the colors, keeping the composition, but making it a lot more amazing. Now let's have a look here at the prompt that I'm using. So this is a classic prompt that I'm using for Ref Animated. And I have here my details, Lord of the Rings, warrior standing in a cave with a cave lake in the background. So that worked out beautifully. I have a lot of negative prompts here. I'm using a lot of negative embeddings on top of that. I have linked them below so you can download that, put them yourselves into the embeddings folder so you can call them like this. So for example, you can see here bad image version two, I have bad prompt version two, bad hands five, easy negative and so on. These can really help you get a lot better results with the same models. Let's have you look at the second example. Now in this case, I didn't go with a finely detailed composition as last time. Instead, what I did here is a very rough composition so the mask is simply just a white circle that has a little bit of a blur around it, an outer glow, as you would say. And then below that, I also have a little bit of a ledge here, just a gray rectangle is all. And that is the input where through the prompt I defined, I want to have a girl sitting on a ledge. And as you can see, this turned out amazingly. Now, because I didn't use any other control net, I had to do several rerolls to actually get the specific composition I want to have here where she's sitting like that very elegantly. But what you can also do here is you can use multiple control nets at the same time. So if you would like to, and if you have a position of the girl sitting, you could, for example, use control net open pose in a second control net and use both methods at the same time. Now, when you do that, you have a lot of control over that. And this method is even more powerful. Again, let's have a look here at the prompt. It's the same prompt setup. It's the same negative prompt that I'm using. But of course, the core was different here. It is beautiful woman sitting on the edge of a building wearing a white dress facing the viewer red moon in the background stars in the night sky nighttime. And again, when you look at the image, I have to say it is really amazing, really beautiful. What I also like is that the light on her is reflected in the light on the background. So everything here works out really beautifully. And here we have a last example where I made a variation of that moon scene. Now here I'm turning the moon into a window. So I put a dark circle into the white circle and then another a little bit less bright circle that is really big 
into the dark circle. Now that is to create the surface of a planet. And here with the prompt, I wanted to have a female astronaut sitting in that window. And as you can see, again, the output is really amazing. The AI figured out for itself on how the woman is sitting here in the window. And it's just magically on how well this works. Let's again have a look at the prompt here. So here again, the same setup with the prompt and the negative prompt. The core element here is beautiful woman in an astronaut uniform sitting in a round space station window, Milky Way in the background. As you can see, this method works amazingly well, gives you a lot of range on how you can control the light and the composition, but at the same time leaves a lot of freedom for the AI. And this is a really powerful, beautiful method. We will check this out more on Sunday on my live stream on this channel here. I'm looking forward to all kinds of amazing things we can do with this. Subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah. <laughs>